More than half of all mass-produced food on our supermarket shelves contains palm oil, as does a whole range of cosmetics. It's supposed to be healthier than animal fat and could be used as biofuel, replacing fossil fuels. But ironically, this greener energy source is destroying the environment. Because most of it is grown in Malaysia and Indonesia, where rainforests continue to be cut and burnt to make way for plantations. Forest clearing for palm oil plantations and other purposes, the burning of forests and drainage of swampland have turned Indonesia into the third largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. The deforestation is also destroying the natural habitat of the orangutan, now a highly endangered species. Particularly hard hit is the tripper peat forest in Sumatra. Uh, peat swamp forests have a very high level, actually the highest level of biodiversity known in, uh, in Southeast Asia, probably worldwide. The flagship species is the Sumatran orangutan, which occurs there in the highest known densities. If these populations are destroyed, you have about 10% of the now existing population of Sumatran orangutans wiped out. Regina Frey has worked since 1973 to preserve the habitat of the Sumatran orangutan, of which there are only 6,000 left in the wild. She and a fellow biologist, Monica Borner, built the first orangutan rehabilitation center in the Loiza National Park in Sumatra. She later set up the orangutan protection program, Paneco. The Loiza National Park is now one of the two remaining habitats of the Sumatran orangutan, but even here, the rainforests are being destroyed by palm oil producers. The Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil was set up in 2003 to make production more sustainable. The RSPO groups food manufacturers, palm oil producers, retailers and non-profit groups such as Paneco. But the environmental organisation Greenpeace says the RSPO is not working well. Well, the problem is that uh, a lot of the members of the RSPO are actually still continuing to destroy rainforests and peatlands. And this, of course, is a big problem because the RSPO is not credible like that. One of the major offenders, Greenpeace argues, is Sinar Mass, one of Indonesia's biggest palm oil producers. The Swiss-based food giant Nestle used oil imported from Sinar Mass to make Kit Kats, hence this Greenpeace video campaign. Nestle, as well as Migro and Co-op, Switzerland's largest supermarket chains, have now cut their ties with Sinar Mass. The RSPO, which Migro helped to set up, may be faulty, but Swiss retailers still believe it's the best organisation for achieving sustainability. Migro and the Co-op chain buy certificates through the RSPO to support the production of sustainable palm oil. At the moment we use the system book and claim. That means we buy certificates for the quantity of palm oil we are using in our production site. And this is then paid to the, our producers in Malaysia. We're aware that palm oil production puts huge pressure on rainforests. Whole plantations are being established at the cost of rainforests and the rights of local inhabitants are not being respected. We want to make sure that our products do not leave a carbon footprint and are doing what we can to achieve sustainable palm oil. The first sustainable plantations were certified in 2008. Since then, plantations with a capacity of 1.5 million tonnes have been certified. That caters for about 30% of European demand. But the sustainable and non-sustainable oil are poured together into giant vats and delivered mixed. So the challenge now is to separate supply chains for sustainable oil. We would like to shift to the segregation system that is only possible if we join forces. We saw the retailers, brand manufacturers and importers of palm oil. 
He's urging America, China and India to join European retail groups in their fight for sustainable supplies. But consumers also have a role to play, according to Greenpeace. Um, if the companies realize that for the consumer it's really an important issue that palm oil doesn't come from deforestation anymore, then they will be ready to act. So it is also the power of the consumer to actually put pressure on the companies. By, for example, writing emails to companies urging them to take action. Johan Zublin says politicians can also help by putting pressure on Indonesia to free up fallow land for exploitation by palm producers. There are land out there, about, I told, heard about 10 to 15 million hectares of land that is not used. And that can be used for palm oil. If we can make it available for palm oil production, we would take a lot of pressure from the forests. On the ground level, Paneco has developed a pilot study endorsed by the RSPO using fallow land. A pre-nursery has been established for oil palms and a training programme set up in organic farming. Paneco is negotiating to transfer palm oil concessions from high-value conservation forests to fallow land. Palm producers could be given financial incentives as set up under the UN Framework Conference on Climate Change. We, we hope that through this scheme of carbon trade, maybe with additional help from uh, foundations or grants, we will be able to, uh, to uh, enter a deal which will actually allow us to rehabilitate those forests. Swiss-based stakeholders from retailers to NGOs are making real efforts to achieve sustainable palm oil production, but time is running out. Experts estimate that if deforestation continues at the present rate, the Sumatran orangutans will be extinct within 20 years.